Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with kind of an emergency video out for you today because the sell-off in shares of Facebook is getting extreme, okay? It's really that max point of fear in the market that right now, which is always a great time to reevaluate a stock, take a second look. Uh, so didn't even shave yet this morning, got the bow tie on because, well, I've always got the bow tie on. Uh, so in this video, I want to share why Facebook is falling so bad, badly. It was down 25% in a single day last week, which actually erased the most value off of a company in history. Uh, what are some of the short-term problems we're looking at, some longer-term problems, and the upside. And I'm going to put all this into perspective with some, uh, some forecasts, some price forecasts, and return forecasts for you. Before we get started, though, I want to personally invite all of you to get the weekly bow tie. It's our free weekly newsletter. It goes out every Sunday night before the market opens the next day. It's going to give you all the stock market news, strategies, and updates that you need to see to get you ready for the week. It's completely free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community. So look for the link that I'll leave in the description below or in the chat. And here we see that massive sell-off last week, down 25% in just a day when it reported that fourth quarter earnings, uh, down from just $323 a share all the way down to uh, about $240 a share on that day, and it's continued to fall. It's really why I say there is just the max fear in this uh, in this stock right now. 40 analysts slashed their targets on Facebook. Uh, we're getting daily, we're getting new e new news updates about you know people saying this is dead money or they can't come back from this. And you know J.P. Morgan actually gave Facebook its first downgrade since the 2012 IPO. So. Again, it's something that I think is really coming to a head in this stock. I think it's getting extremely cheap. So we want to look at some of these issues, what these issues are, why it fell so hard in the fourth quarter earnings report, and can it bounce back from that, what, what the future holds for this stock. Now, the numbers behind the fourth quarter were undeniably bad, okay? The uh, platform actually lost a million active daily active users uh, throughout the year. Uh, which obviously for any social pl platform, they live and die by the, those counts of daily and monthly active users. Uh, they actually missed profit projections, so earnings estimates by 14% or 14 cents per share, which you know is, is a cardinal sin for any company to miss estimates, but to miss it by that much was pretty heavy. Uh, the operating margin, all you out there in the nation know, this is one of my favorite measures of a stock, of, of the performance of a stock. The operating margin is the operating income, so the income left over after paying uh, all the costs to suppliers, some of the product, the production costs, the marketing costs, uh, the wages, all of those operation, key core operational costs. Uh, that actually fell by 6%, okay, the, uh, the operating margin, so that profitability, that percentage of profitability. And a lot of that was on increased metaverse spending, okay. Facebook is now spending heavily uh, in its marketing as well as product development in Metaverse and Web 3.0. So that's gonna uh, that's really gonna factor into our ideas and our analysis whether it can come back, how long that spending is going to uh, going to ramp up, and when the revenues actually come through for it. Ad impressions also dropped six percent uh, in North America, mostly on the changes in the Apple privacy uh, policy. If you don't know, Apple instituted a new privacy policy uh, through its uh, through its devices last year that really. Uh, really hindered Facebook and other social media's platforms ability to retarget people okay basically in the past Facebook and you know any social media platform they've been been able to place a cookie on your computer on your device on your mobile phone uh, if you visit their site or some other sites uh, and it uses that data about your surfing about your your activity online to better serve you ads right uh, so obviously that's very valuable for for uh, publishers and for advertisers, they pay a lot more money for people that they can retarget those ads to if they know that they're getting a more targeted audience. Well, Apple last year said, okay, we're not, we're going to change this. We're not going to be collecting that kind of data and that kind of information on people's devices. Uh, and so again, that really hurt uh, Facebook and a lot of these other social platforms, the money that they can collect on those ads that they serve. So the first step in our analysis is to talk about some of those near term and longer term issues with Facebook, whether it can rebound from those, whether it can reverse some of those trends and where it goes on those before we get to the really the numbers side of the uh, the comparison and uh, the price forecast. Uh, now on those Apple privacy changes, 
So if you don't know, Apple instituted uh, some privacy changes last year that uh, that didn't collect as much user data as it used to. Okay, uh, social media, Facebook, all these other social media sites, they sell, sold ads based on retargeting data, based on user data, right? Uh, advertisers will pay a lot more uh, in ad impressions if they know that they're reaching a very targeted audience, right? So when you, do, when you visit a site, when you visit... Uh, different pages online through your Apple devices or, or through any any device, then it collects data on that on that usage, and uh, and those social media companies use that to really be able to target you with ads. Well, Apple uh, Apple stopped doing that last year. They instituted some of those privacy changes, and that really uh, really limited the uh, the ad revenue that uh, some of these social media sites can could uh, could collect. Now, eventually, I do believe that because this is such a big deal uh, that, that Facebook and some of these other social sites will develop some kind of a workaround with this. They will fix these identity uh, users, the, these develop a fix to identify users and their, you know, and their uh, usage online that really works around these privacy changes and gets back to that retargeting idea, okay? Uh, now, saying that, I think these Apple privacy issues, they will weigh throughout the rest of 2022. It's going to take time for Facebook or, or some other companies to develop some kind of a fix for this, uh, but it is coming. So I do think that is something that will be reversed, and uh, and you'll start seeing those that ad, that ad revenue increase uh, pretty pretty quickly. Now, a big part of the drop in daily users for f Facebook for the fourth quarter was the competition from TikTok. Okay, TikTok is growing. You know, whether it's that platform continues to be a thing, right, for social media users uh, is something to be debated. But there's also a lot of things that Facebook does that, that TikTok just doesn't do and a lot of social media uh, platforms don't do. You know, Facebook has uh, WhatsApp, which is a huge app, especially outside the U.S. Uh, in emerging markets. It's got uh, Instagram, obviously, as well as Facebook. Facebook, and just the, the kind of scale that Facebook has is something that TikTok and really no other social media platform can compete with. So I do think uh, Facebook is ultimately going to be successful with its video transition and with Reels. Okay, in response to that TikTok competition, Facebook has announced that it is really going to push into video even more. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, eventually it's going to be it's going to be successful with that transition and be able to compete a little bit better with maybe YouTube and TikTok. Uh, the big unknown, of course, for Facebook right now is that spending on the metaverse and Web 3.0. Okay, it is uh, the reason why those operating margins fell, why profitability fell so much is because it is developing uh, those new products. It is developing that new transition into the metaverse, into Web 3.0. But I do think that the VR, virtual reality, augmented reality is uh, much closer. The monetization of that is much closer, obviously, with the, uh, the Oculus intellectual property. Uh, Facebook uh, acquired Oculus Rift uh, quite a few years ago, actually, now, and has the goggles. I think it's going to be able to monetize that much quicker than most people uh, understand, even if, okay, we aren't fully immersed into kind of a metaverse within the next uh, five years or so. So now I want to take some of that qualitative analysis and kind of fold in the quantitative analysis. Okay, the numbers that I'm looking at behind this, you can find all these numbers on uh, on Yahoo Finance or any investing platform. And what we're going to be doing here, first we're going to compare the growth uh, in all of these. We're going to compare the revenue growth, the operating margin, and the price to sales on the uh, the social media sites. Right. So I've already I've gone through. I've gone through Yahoo Finance and I can show you how I did this. So first, to find that sales growth, you go to the financials page on any of these stocks. So we've got the revenue numbers here and for the sales growth, so the first thing we did was find the three-year annualized revenue growth. Now, uh, you can do one year. I like to do three years because it smooths out a little bit of you know any of the individual years, the big boosts that, that a company had from any particular thing. So you wanna take a three-year annualized revenue growth when you're when you're looking at these and so we can go back to here we can see that facebook in the last year in 2021 booked 117.9 billion dollars which is an amazing sum to think about uh, 117.929 billion dollars divided by and then we'll go three years here so one two three divided by 55.838 billion in 2018 you do that it's uh it's actually doubled its revenue over the last three years that's 2.11 so 211 percent 
um, minus the one is, is actually 111% revenue growth. Now to find a three-year annualized date of that, okay, so to find the kind of the average three-year, average yearly amount that it grew revenue, you go here to x to the y, and then 0.33, okay, 0.33 because it's a three-year, and you find that Facebook grew its revenue by 27.98, 28% over the last three years, 28% annually over the last three years. That's the revenue growth for Facebook. So we've got that, we've got that right here, 27.99, and I did that for all the social media stocks here, Twitter, Snap, Pinterest, and Google. Next, we'll look at the, uh, the operating margin, and again, and so here, if you can go to the statistics page uh, on Yahoo Finance. You're gonna find these other these other ones. Uh, scroll down here to profit margin and operating margin. Now the profit margin, that's gonna be your net income divided by total sales, okay? That is the, uh, the, the ultimate bottom line profit margin. I like to use the operating margin. Now the, uh, the profit margin, that's gonna include uh, things like your taxes, leverage that a company uses uh, to get to its ultimate profitability. I like to use operating margin though because it's a little bit purer measure of how well management is doing turning those sales into operating profits, right? So again, the operating margin is just, uh, and we can go back here, the operating income, right? The operating income divided by the total revenue, okay? So it's it minuses out the cost of revenue, which is production, which is paying suppliers, that kind of thing. And it minuses out operating expenses, which is your R&D spending, your, uh, your, your staffing, a lot of those other, all those other operating costs to get the operating income divided by total revenue, okay? So with, uh, with Facebook here, you've got an operating margin of 39.6%. So we just add that to the graph here, 39.6%, and I've done that again for all the social media sites. Now for price to sales. For price to sales, you can't necessarily do just what, uh, what, what Yahoo says because Yahoo uh, doesn't always measure the, uh, the trailing sales quite right or the, uh, you know, what it's measuring. So I like to use just the financials, the financials data that we had, you know, find the, uh, the total revenue, and then you find the market cap of the company. So we'll go back to statistics here. So if you have market cap of the company, so obviously this is this is off. This says 5.76 price to sales because they're using they're using a different market cap. The market cap of the stock actually at the close uh, yesterday was 600 billion dollars. Okay, so that's that's the market cap. That's the total value of all the shares in the market um, is 600 billion divided by that 117 billion dollars, uh, 117 billion dollars sales. That's actually a 5.1 times on a price to sales basis. And now we're going to compare this against the valuation on all these other social media sites as well as Facebook's own price to price to sales history. So if we see Facebook right now is trading for 5.1 times on a price to sales basis, we can actually go here into uh, here into into Morningstar, and you see Morningstar actually has a five star rating on shares of Facebook. They've got a fair fair value target of $400, almost twice where Facebook is right now. But we can go over here to valuations, and uh, and you can see these uh, the history of a stock for its price to sales for its. Uh, price to earnings for a lot of these. And you see, okay, if you look here at price to sales, I'll enlarge this a little bit so you can see it better. Look at price to sales history here. 2012, when it IPO'd, when it first came out, it was trading for about 11 times on a price to sales basis, which is uh, is really gross stock, uh, gross stock atmosphere, right? Anything over 10 times on a price to sales is gross stock, which Apple grows its, uh, or excuse me, Facebook grows its, pre its earnings or its sales by 20, 30% a year. So it is definitely a growth stock at times. You can see it has come down in 2018. It was trading for 7.4 times on a price to sales basis. Uh, 8.9, 10 times, 8.6 here, uh, just as recently as last year. And now it's trading for that 5.1. But it is it was at 10.5 times average over the last five years on a price to sales basis. So. If we take that average 10.5 times, I mean, that is almost double where it's trading right now. It's trading for right now a 5.1 times price to sales. If it were trading at 10 times that average five-year multiple, it would be twice the price. It would be at that $400 per share target or that Morningstar has. 
but you can kind of take a look here and uh, and I would say I would say you know maybe maybe not 10 times I wouldn't target a 10 times multiple for price to sales on Facebook but obviously if you look back at the, the last few years here 7.4 8.9 uh, 10 8.6 Obviously, something above 5.1. This stock is trading in deep value territory because so many analysts have sold it off, have have lowered their expectations for it, and there was really you're at that point of max fear. Uh, so, and then if you look at, let's compare it to some of these other social media sites, right? So I've got Twitter, Snap, Pinterest, Google here. Uh, comparing the price to sales on those, Facebook is the lowest of all five here. Uh, the lowest price to sales ratio, which is interesting because it usually trades at a premium. Uh, a lot of times you'll see Facebook price to sales multiple, this valuation trading higher than a lot of these others because Facebook is so large, the scale is so large on this company and it monetizes much better. It monetizes much better than Twitter. It gets much more money out of those users than Twitter does, than Snap, than Pinterest. Um, but again, there is so much fear in this stock right now that it has driven that price to sales multiple down so far. Um, but you see, you know, Twitter trading for 5.7 times, Snap trading for 9.6 times on a price to sales. And if you compare some of these numbers, revenue growth for, for Facebook was actually higher than, uh, than Twitter and Google uh, over the last three years. Okay, 28% revenue growth per year on Facebook, 16% for Twitter, and yet it is st selling for a higher price to sales multiple, which just does not make sense. You would think, you know, and, and if you look at the operating margin here, 40% operating margin for Facebook, even after coming down over the last quarter, uh, is still well above the 7% operating margin, that profitability uh, that Twitter sees. Uh, in fact, it's the highest of the five of the five social uh, media stocks we've got here. 7% uh, negative uh, snap isn't making positive earnings, so it's negative operating margin, negative margins here. Pinterest, 12, 13% uh, operating margin. Even Google with a very high operating margin, still only 30%. Okay, so Facebook has the highest profitability of all five of these companies. It has the, I'll say the third highest revenue growth, and yet it is trading at a huge discount, 5.1 times on a price to sales basis. If we take an average here of these five stocks, we get an average price to sales a multiple of 6.8 times. Now, what I want to do, I want to take some of those numbers and really put it into a uh, a matrix for return as well as price targets. Okay, this matrix, this is taking, this is assuming some kind of an annualized sales growth from Facebook. Okay, we've seen in the past, Facebook has been able to, uh, even in the last three years, which Facebook was is still a mature company. You know, it's growing to $117 billion in sales uh, and still putting up 30% sales growth each year. Okay, now that number has got to come down eventually. Obviously, you can't keep growing 30% every year forever. Um, so we're going to make some very conservative estimates, some very modest estimates here. Uh, annualized sales growth of 10, 15, or 20%. Uh, and I actually think Facebook can get back to this 20% annualized sales growth. So I'm gonna be making my estimates really on this 20% column, this 20% sales growth. Over here, the price to sales. So we're also saying, okay, you know what, we, we, can, we can forecast sales growth for Facebook, but what's that price multiple come back to? Okay, if we look back uh, at these at these five social media stocks, we see the average was almost seven times on a price to sales basis. Uh, even the lowest next to Facebook was 5.7 for uh, for Twitter. And we can look back in the past on the um, on shares of Facebook itself, see that it's traded for 10.5 times price to sales in the past five years on average. It's traded for even here. It's traded only for as low as 7.4 percent. So actually, this. Uh, <clears throat> this estimates right these estimates right here it's 5.5 65 and 75 are actually extremely conservative as well okay if we look this 7.5 times price to sales ratio for Facebook that's actually the lowest it's been um, you know in recent history it's 2018 it traded for 7.4 times uh, on a price to sales um, so to say that it, it would trade for 5.5 or 6.5 I think is overly conservative overly overly uh, modest here on these. Uh, so I would really say that 20% and 7.5%, we could even extend this to like 8 and 8.5 and 9.5 on a price to sales and 20 25% uh, sales growth. But I want to keep these extremely conservative, uh, these estimates, just to show you that this can still be a great stock, a great return, even if it, it completely underwhelms on some of these uh, growth as well as price to sales.
So if we see that uh, Facebook only grows sales by 10% over the next five years, okay, this is a five-year estimate. If Facebook only grows sales by 10% a year, which again would be about a third of what it's done over the last three years, and if it stays at that 5.5 times on a price to sales basis, which would be under all of the other social media stocks, um, so that would be, I, I think that would be really the worst case scenario and, and likely would not happen. I mean, this is like a maybe a 5% chance of happening. Even then, if it happens, if it trades at that 5.5 times price to sales ratio, if sales grow at 10% a year, you're still gonna make 74% over the next five years on that money. Shares are gonna be at $383 per share. What I've done here is I've taken this return uh, this return estimate on the shares on the current price of $220, and I've applied that to uh, to what the share price target would be in five years. Even that though, okay, 75%, and we can get an annualized rate on that. Uh, we'll go 1.74, and again, use your little x to the y and 0.2 here since it's five years, and that's gonna be 11.7%. So I'm saying worst case scenario, a scenario that I see maybe two to 5% chance of happening, you make 11.7% over the next five years on shares of Facebook. Let's look at the more likely scenarios though. So we know that Facebook has grown sales by 30% uh, a year on its three year basis here. Uh, so that would make, I, I'd say definitely, I think it can go to 20%. Even if it keeps on, uh, you know, if it doesn't monetize that metaverse stuff like it, think it thinks it could, it doesn't monetize the AR or virtual reality stuff, and TikTok continues to eat into its, uh, into its sales growth, even if it only does 15%, so half the sales growth that it's done in the past, even if it only does that, okay? And it, uh, it comes back to more, kind of a more normalized 6.5 times on a price to sales basis, okay? We, we've seen in the past it's done well above that, but even if it can only get to six and a half times on a price to sales basis, 15% annualized sales growth, you're still gonna make 157% on the stock over the next five years. That's a share price target of $566, uh, <clears throat> and 157% over five years on an annualized basis would be 21%, 20.77% a year you would make on shares of Facebook. So I think you see, even on these very conservative estimates, uh, if, if shares of Facebook can come back up to any kind of normal in its growth, as well as price to sales, you're gonna make a lot of money on these shares. Uh, again, I think this 20% sales growth would be uh, much more likely, would actually probably be a little bit uh, conservative still here, as well as the seven and a half times on a price to sales. Uh, we see here, this was the lowest, the seven and a half times was the lowest it traded in 2018 on a price to sales basis, uh, and it's traded higher than that since. Uh, so, but even conservatively, if it just does 20% sales growth over the next five years, seven and a half times price to sales, you will make 267% on that stock. Shares will be at $808 a, a share each over the next, uh, in the next five years. And that will be 3.66.2. You will make 29.6% a year annualized on shares of Facebook over the next five years. I think even that can still be a conservative estimate. I think you, you can do very well on shares of Facebook. I'm buying shares from my own personal portfolio right now. Uh, Again, if you just look at the history of this stock, what it's been doing, been able to do on sales growth, what it's been able to do on that price to sales multiple and compare it against some of these other social media stocks, I think you see the value is definitely there for Facebook and, uh, and you should be able to, to pick up shares at this point.